how to grind a knife. I'm Steven from Nora Knives. This is a knife, it's not ground. I'm gonna show you how to grind it. I start by putting a center line on the knife. Basically mark the center so you know where it's gonna go. I use a two by 72 with a dust collector that has a vortex system so I don't light my house on fire. A water cooler so I don't overheat the blade. And I start with a 50 grit belt. Now this is a used 50 grit, which is what I start with to take down the initial edge. And that's just to break the corner so I don't ruin my brand new $5 belt on the first pass. I like to grind in a very locked in manner. I pull my shoulders kind of in, I lock my wrists in, and I use my body to move back and forth. So if you think of your body as stationary, you wanna be in and really be locked in. A lot of the geometry I do, I use my thumbs. I, I hold the bottom of the blade and depending on if I push my thumb at the top or if I push my thumb at the bottom, I'm gonna get a different grind. Let's go ahead and knock the edge off and then we're gonna switch a belt and we're gonna do our primary grind on one side so I can tell you how that goes. All I've done is I basically have done a grind from a little bit before my center line, about halfway up the blade. At this point, I actually changed the angle I grind at. So I've been grinding in a vertical manner like this. And what I do at this point is I actually angle it. And I do that so that my bevel doesn't come into the handle and I could sweep it up. And that allows for me to get a nice taper but to actually have a nice flat spot here and no plunge lunges. So at this point, I'm going to keep thinning it down and I'm going to actually twist it at an angle and come through and I'm going to manipulate the blade. So, so far I've been basically pulling straight across and when I get to the tip, I pull just a little bit back with my handle hand. So if I was doing it this way, I'd be pulling back this way just slightly. And that's to kind of keep an even grind all the way across. At this point, I'm going to pull it at an angle, and as I get towards the tip, I'm actually going to slightly, I'm exaggerating it, but imagine I'm rotating it. So the grind is actually going from this way, and I'm slowly rotating it as I get to the tip. My ideal grind is where at the tip, it's almost flat. It's tapered to the point where the thickness here is very similar to here, because when I put geometry on, which will thin down the edge later, but that's what I'm trying to achieve with this. See how twisted it is? So when you're grinding steel and it's preheat treated, as you're grinding away one side, the other side actually relieves itself. And so it's like, if you imagine it has a bunch of tension in it and it's always held straight when it's not ground. And then you remove one side and that side then lets go and it starts pulling tight on this side. Wow. So it's like that. Pretty now, as cool. soon as I do this again, it'll actually be straight again. You can see I've, I've basically tapered it up and I've tapered it down all the way. I'm gonna now do the backside real quick. And then when we get back, I'll show you the geometry I do on the edge to actually increase the performance and make it work good as a kitchen knife.
now that I got both sides fairly even, and you can see, see how it's nice and straight now? I'm gonna thin it down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing pulls back and forth that way and this way and bring my edge down. I use, I got a little tool. It's got little scrape, scribe lines in it. And that tells me how thick my edge is. So right now, it doesn't fit in there. So my edge is actually really thick. This is a 30 thousandths gap. I wanna bring my edge down to basically a zero. And depending on how far in it goes, tells me what type of geometry I'm cutting, making the knife for. If it goes all the way and it's loose, that's a very thin, high performance knife for like vegetables and very light, delicate work. If I'm one or two notches up, that's gonna be general purpose. If I'm close to the top, that's gonna be a hard use cleaver. You know, you don't have to worry about what you hit. this point I have the knife down to actually pretty thin it's 30 thou I don't know 3 eighths to half an inch behind the edge on our blades I actually when I'm grinding I leave the tip a little thicker the reason I leave the tip a little thicker is so that I can evenly grind it to where the tip actually is a little more durable one of the biggest things I found when I first started making knives is I was grinding the tip and the edge all the same and then I found that my customers were chipping off the tip. So I started grinding this way, and since then I've had a lot less, but I'm still getting the performance out of the tip. Um, but I've had a lot less tips break. At this point, I'm going to actually put the geometry on the blade. So, so far this is a full flat grind, or three quarter here, but full flat all the way across. Meaning this whole surface is perfectly, they're perfectly flat. There's no curves or convexing or concave or anything like that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to put a secondary grind just in about this first half inch of the blade. And that's gonna be for food release and also for ease of cutting. The first half inch of your edge is what makes a knife cut or doesn't cut. It really is the make or break part of the knife. And if it's too thick, it feels really hard to push through. If it's too thin, it feels chippy or it flexes a little bit, which sometimes isn't bad, just like sometimes a thick knife isn't bad. It's all a matter how you want it. This is our kind of our all around general purpose um, cut. Other thing, I dip every pass, I'm sure you've noticed, every time I pull it across the blade, the belt, I dip it in here. As I'm grinding, this can't get too hot. So I'm actually, one, I'm feeling with my thumbs, and two, I'm watching, which is the primary, I'm watching the blade. So I'm actually watching the water hit the blade, and by how quickly the water evaporates off the blade, I'm able to make sure I'm not getting it too hot. Um, if this gets above 300 degrees Fahrenheit, I am then losing my temper and it's not gonna be as sharp or as hard of a knife when it's all said and done. To get this secondary bevel, I'm actually gonna come in flat, and then I'm just gonna slightly tweak it. So I'm 
I'm gonna move my thumbs up the blade and put a little more pressure and just lightly feather it up and do a pull. I'm gonna check it, see where I'm at, and I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna do it until I get this edge getting fairly thin. At that point, I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm gonna come up top here and I'm gonna actually use the slack of the belt and I'm gonna pull it across this way and that's gonna give me the final thick thickness that I want in the blade and also give me some of the convexing I want. So I showed that primary edge. You saw the secondary bevel when I was doing it with the flat. Then you saw when I was coming through, going through on this. Now what I was doing is I was actually putting a slight radius on there. So I'm taking those sharp, hard edges and I'm radiusing them slightly. At this point, I'm actually gonna come in, I'm gonna vertical grind it and I'm gonna smooth everything out and finish bevel it all so that it's very uniform, all the scratch patterns go in one direction, and I know that this edge and this blade is very consistent. One thing you gotta be careful of when doing this is actually overheating the edge. I'm constantly watching the water as I dip, I try to keep as much water on the blade, and as you can see, it's, it actually has enough water to drip. I'm watching that pull up and making sure that it doesn't evaporate off, because as soon as it evaporates off, I don't think you're getting too close to the temper of the blade itself. I slow down the belt grinder when I do my vertical, just because I am going to work. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna keep this part very flat and I'm gonna tilt the, the tip down so I can work on my taper. Then once I do both sides of that, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna feather the blade up. Initially, I told you I have a glass platen on here and this platen actually has a slight radius on this part. And I actually like that because that helps me not basically to grind into my handle area uh, where my scale is going to glue up so that I get a nice tight glue up. It allows me to kind of taper in that area here and not have any issues. see me you would see sparks kind of shoot out from the side or the cutting edge what I'm actually doing is I'm twisting the blade just ever so slightly to kind of give that geometry for the food release at this point the blade is basically fully ground if I hit that on a piece of leather it would actually shave arm hairs at this point 
So after this we go and I hand sand it up to whatever finish we want to do. Most of mine I leave pretty rough, about a 220 coarse finish. And then we, uh, we put a handle on it. That's how I grind a blade. Every blade's a little different, but for a standard eight and a half inch chef knife that we make, that's kind of my bread and butter grind. Um, at this point, it's, I mean, it's very thin. That's 30 thou, half inch up. So this blade will cut right through pretty much anything in the kitchen and it'll be a good workhorse. Um, it's thin enough that it's gonna perform good, but the, the taper isn't so drastic that the tip bends real drastically. I mean, it has a little flex to it, but not much. And it's just nicely balanced. Um, with the handle on, you'll have pretty much a perfect balance point right at the edge of the handle, front of the blade. So, that's it.